As many of you know, I am currently studying in about the Sanatana Dharma, or Hinduism. Um, and I had mentioned that I am interested in learning about the different types of Hinduism, denomination, sex, um, whichever term you prefer. And I had talked about the Hare Krishnas and Vaishnavism, and a few people have written in about that, which was very nice. Um, one person, I'm not sure if I read this correctly or not, but one person had mentioned something about Vaishnavas trying to make Hinduism um, monotheistic. And I had mentioned that I believe to some degree that I am of the monotheistic beliefs. Um, I do believe in one divine source, but I accept the deities of the world as a form of that one divine source. I don't call upon God all the time as just one name such as um, a Muslim might, you know, with Allah, or a Christian with Jesus. The one thing that attracted me to Hinduism, um, period, not just Vaishnavism, or even Shaktism, but just Hinduism itself, was its acceptance of things like that that, you know, almost any path can lead to the divine or just, you know, a peaceful life. My first encounter of information about Vaishnavism was on the Gaudiya Vaishnava sect or the Hare Krishna or International Society of Krishna Consciousness, um, which is said to be only a subsect of the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. While I do my best to try and respect all beliefs regardless of how I feel, um, I personally did not feel that they represented actual Hinduism or what I had learned about it. Um, many claim that Krishna was the only God and such. Um, they had many restrictions on things about what to eat, what you can and can't do, what's this and that, and it didn't seem to go along with what I had been learning about Hinduism as a whole. Um, and I also didn't care for their thoughts on women. Um, they have stated such things as they are of lesser or lower intelligence. Krishna himself in the Gita even says of feminine attributes and their presiding goddesses. I am fame, beauty, speech, remembrance, intelligence, constancy, and forbearance. So, according to Krishna, who is God, basically, in the Gita, intelligence is a feminine attribute. And about the other gods being less than Krishna, or just demigods. There are things in there about that as well. Let's see. Among wielders of weapons, I am Rama. I am the shark of flowing waters. I am the Ga Genghis, or Ganges. I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of that. The daughter of Janu. 
of creation. I am the beginning, the end, and indeed the middle. Let's see, what else? Among the Rujas, I am Shiva. So, yes, basically Krishna is not saying that these gods are any less than he is or just demigods. Basically it is saying that he is them. They are basically one, or a form of him, or he is a form of them. Totally different than what the International Society of Krishna Consciousness um, portrays Vaishnavism to be, or portrays even Lord Krishna to be. And having them, or having that specific um, denomination as my first, you know, source of information about the Vaishnava tradition, um, it did kind of make me more cautious into looking into it, even though I seen some common things and beliefs I already had um, as a former Catholic or Christian. From my understanding, Rama and Krishna are considered incarnations of Lord Vishnu, basically God um, born on earth or, you know, living in like a type of human form, much like Christ of the Bible, being the Son of God, being God born in human form. And that's what sparked my interest um, specifically about Vaishnavism. Um, I really like the fact that, you know, most Hindus in general um, are very open and accepting to different types of gods outside of the Indian pantheon and what's taught in, say, the Vedas or the Gita, things like that. But the fact that there is a form of Hinduism that teaches that God has come to earth, um, yeah, that really sparked my interest because it was, it seemed more of an open idea than what I had already believed in. You know, um, I didn't want to completely let go of my belief in the Christian Trinity or the divinity of Christ. I had read even in a few places that um, well, except Christ even as an incarnation of Vishnu, some even accepting the Buddha as one, whereas many Christians may, you know, see Christ as the only God or the only way, and many Buddhists don't see Buddha as God at all. But, you know, they make exceptions, maybe not all, but some, will make those exceptions that perhaps they too are incarnations of God or Lord Vishnu. Perhaps a major difference though between Vaishnavism or just Hinduism in general and religions such as Christianity is the acknowledgement of female divinity. The Shakti or consort of Lord Vishnu would be Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune or prosperity or wealth. Um, sometimes people acknowledge her as all three more. Um, but yes, there is not just a male god in both the 
original God sense and the incarnation forms, such as God the Father and then Jesus in Christianity. As I had just mentioned, there is Lord Vishnu and then Lakshmi. And in the incarnation forms, at least the, the main two that most people know of and seen the most important, Rama, there is Sita, and with Krishna, there is Radha. Some say that Lakshmi is secondary and even submissive to Vishnu, which of course is something I don't care for, a uh, belief that really bothers me. And there are others that say that she is more important, that she surpasses him in importance. The same is said of Radha. Some say she's secondary, that she is just a great devotee. Others have said that while Krishna may enchant the world, she enchants him. That she controls him with her love. I'm going to read um, a bit of what I found online about Radha. In the Vaishnava devotional or bhakti tradition of Hinduism that focuses on Krishna, Radha is Krishna's friend and advisor. For some of the adherents of these traditions, her importance approaches or even exceeds that of Krishna. She is considered to be his original Shakti, the supreme goddess. Other gopis are usually considered to be her maidservant. Speaking about Radha as a young girl or within her birth. This girl's beauty and nature is divine. All the houses wherever her footprints are, Lord Narayan, with all other deities, will reside. Nurture this girl, thinking her to be a goddess. Radha's love towards Krishna in the terrestrial or customary meaning is not just a relation between a man and a woman. The feeling of this love is divine and phenomenal, which gives this love a pious form. The philo philosophical side of this reduces the distance of the support and the supportive. Also, the difference between the worshipper and the worshipful is not there. Krishna is the life of the Braj. Radha is the soul of Krishna. That is why it is said, Radha, you are his soul. One form of Radha, she is a devotee, worshipper of Krishna, and in the second form, she is a worshipful, devoted by Krishna. So it is basically saying that Radha Sita, or even Lakshmi, is not an inferior form of God or secondary, but maybe even the most important part of God. So, yes, I will continue to learn about the other denominations of Hinduism, such as Shaivism and Shaktism and Smartism. Um, and just all about Hinduism in general, even without a Pacific sect. But I still have the strong interest in the part of Vaishnavism about the incarnation of God, especially the incarnation of both male and female forms. So, sorry for this long video. Anybody has any information, please. Um, I'd love to hear it, as I stated in my other videos. And thank you for watching.